Welcome back to the next section, focusing on digital technologies and the stack from physical world to the cloud. Why do we need digitalization and where does it appear to us? Possibly we want to automate parts of our production or simply monitor our plans. But how does it work? How is the reality translated into the cloud? And what is this cloud all about? To start, you can build up the stack of digital technologies from reality, represented as physical device, to the cloud platform. Which layers are needed in between? Nicely done. So what we see, some interim steps or layers are required from the physical world to the cyberspace. But on which layer can your business be created? The answer is simple, on every layer. Either if the needed ecosystem can be established or if you can cover it yourself. The only important part is your focus, your knowledge, your USP and your business model must be suiting. In our simple example, first, sensors and actuators help to interact with the physical world and provide measurements. Second, the electronic system generates information, in our case about the location and the weather situation. Third, the middleware and application can interpret this information and provide knowledge for your needs, the customized Steiermark Tourismus information. Fourth, on the cloud layer, the wisdom on the customer base provides tailor-made advertisements and promotions. In a more complex stack, which we will analyze during our on-site training, we can also identify and map more of the terms like IoT, IIoT, ICT, and Industry 4.0. But back to the basic principles. To understand and interact with the physical world, cyber-physical systems first sense some inputs, second, set some control based on these inputs, and third, create some output action. This is the most fundamental concept of cyber-physical systems, or CPS. Sensors translate the physical world to computer-readable data. They are based on different measurement principles, like mechanical, piezoelectrical, acoustical, or magnetic, and sensors can measure different types of data, like length, pressure, temperature, torsion, or voltages. Actuators are manipulating or interacting with the physical world based on the computed actions. These include motors, shape-shifting materials, or hydraulics. More details about the working principles of sensors and actuators will be subject of the additional input provided. And the third part, the controller, is the device that interfaces with the peripherals and manages the operations of the connected devices. Specifics of embedded systems in comparison to other consumer electronics, like laptops or smartphones, are their often constraint performance, environmental condition resilience, and often real-time capability requirement. The basic embedded software stack is also something specific to the operations domain and standards. Nevertheless, these topics we will discuss also in the continuation of the course. But let us also talk about IoT, the Internet of Things, or IIoT, the Industrial Internet of Things. The Internet of Things describes the network of things that are embedded with sensors, actuators, and controllers, and are connected to the Internet with the purpose of collecting and exchanging data. IoT, or IIoT, covers multiple application areas, from smart home, to smart farming, to smart production, to wearables and medical devices. Connected wireless or hardwired? Rationals for IoT are related to increased integration and to improved awareness of the system for the environment, and thus improved controls or provide enhanced or new user features. Most IoT or IIoT architectures map on the general architecture of cloud, fog or network, and edge computation. The cloud layer provides on-demand resources, like storage, computation power, or applications on any device. 
Major differences are related to what is provided as a service, platform as a service, or infrastructure as a service, or which characteristics are given, private or public clouds, maintenance included, security and privacy, and the different cost structures. The edge layer is close to the location where the data is generated. As mentioned, real-time and resource constraints are often an issue on edge level. For our MOOC part, we will focus on a specific example for digitalization. A liquid tank, and we want to get information on our mobile device, how much of the liquid is still in the tank. In this block, your task is to elaborate with your peers on the necessary technology stack. First, explain which technologies are needed. Give good examples where to buy or what you would engineer in the forum. Second, if that's not challenging enough and you know how to cope with the water reservoir, brilliant! What if the water reservoir is moving? And what if it's rotating upside down or in zero gravity? How would you structure the technology stack for these cases? Check out more in the forum and in the other blocks of this MOOC course. And don't let others engineer a better solution than yours. So see you in the next video.